Good morning. Good morning. Are we on? Let's try that again. Good morning. Welcome to our back to school meeting. It's great to see everyone as we celebrate the start of the 2019-2020 school year. I'd like to thank our hosts, the Connecticut Technical Education and Career System. Thank you, Superintendent Wibby and Principal Mello for your hospitality and Assistant Principal Dinatelli, and for once again inviting us to AI Prince Technical High School. It's a beautiful school. I want to thank Fran Rabinowitz and CAPS for your countless support and uh, collaboration on this important gathering and for providing our morning refreshments. I want to thank Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisewitz for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us this morning. And thank you to State Board of Education Chairman Alan Taylor, Vice Chair Dr. Stella Lopez, and members Aaron Benham and Bob Trefry for joining us as well. Today, we will hear from leaders across the education landscape in Connecticut. We are so fortunate for the partnerships of CABE, CAPS, and CAS. Thank you, Bob, Fran, and Glenn. We'll also have the opportunity to hear from our Superintendent of the Year, Dr. Alan Adley of Darien. Let us begin our time together with the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Edmarie Peña Garcia, a 10th grade student here at AI Prince, studying electrical. Edmarie. Thank you, Edmarie. At this time, it's my honor to invite Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisewitz to the podium. Lieutenant Governor. Commissioner, Commissioner, thank you so much. Good morning to everyone and to those of you visiting from outside of Hartford, welcome to our beautiful capital city. I want to thank Car uh, Commissioner Cardona and also Fran uh, Rabinowitz for uh, inviting me and welcoming me today. It's a great honor to stand before our state's leaders in education and have the opportunity to address you on behalf of myself and Governor Lamont, um, especially as we begin the new school year. And I just want to give a shout out to the public schools in Middletown, everything that I've accomplished in my life as a result of the hard work of my parents and my wonderful public school teachers uh, in Middletown. <laughs> All right. And I'll just say that my kids uh, went to the same schools that I did and even had some of the same teachers. Um, I'm especially proud to be here because Connecticut continues to lead the nation in education. Our schools and our programs are highlighted in other states uh, as best practices, and last year we ranked fifth in the country for overall educational quality and excellence, and that is no small accomplishment in each and every single one of you is responsible and we want you to know that we're very proud of the work that you do year round uh, for our students. Connecticut also has the best and most qualified teachers in our classrooms and we have some very highly skilled and experienced superintendents leading our public school, school systems across our state. And I think we can all agree that we have some of the best and brightest and most creative and hardworking students in the country too. And every time I have the opportunity to meet students testifying at our state capitol, at robotics competitions, essay contests, and the like, or when I visit schools across the state, I'm always amazed at how ambitious, smart, and well-spoken 
our Connecticut students are, and I'm especially impressed with how they use technology to learn and to explore the world. It's inspiring and it reminds me why we're all here today. It's the reason we're all here, and that is to focus on our next generation. And so while we proudly celebrate all the good things that we've accomplished as a state, we have to acknowledge that there's more work to do. Governor Lamont and I are very committed to every student in Connecticut, no matter where they're from, no matter what color their skin is, no matter what language they speak, if they're undocumented or if they're a citizen, if they have a physical or intellectual disability, if they're from a low-income family, if they're LGBTQ, it doesn't matter. Uh, all of our students deserve the opportunity to succeed. In Connecticut, we believe that Thank you so much for that. In Connecticut, we believe that every single student deserves a quality education, uh, that students and faculty should feel safe and protected going to school every day, and that by the time uh, our students graduate from high school, that they're ready to enter our workforce or ready to enter a college or university. And this is critical for our state because if we want to grow business and, and our economy, we need to make sure that our students are well prepared. Um, and our highly educated workforce is one of our best assets in Connecticut. So it's our job to provide students with the tools they need for 21st century jobs in our 21st century economy. And this specifically includes our urban areas, which for too long have been left behind, resulting in a considerable opportunity gap between our poorest and our most affluent communities. And the governor and I are very proud of the steps that we've taken um, in conjunction with the legislature to make sure that we can reach out and recruit more teachers of color. This is critical because our students need these very important uh, role models. Um, and I know with the help of all of you, our teachers, and of course our State Department of Education, that we can close that opportunity gap that I've spoken of. And you know, in a moment you're gonna hear some more from our new commissioner, Miguel uh, Cardona. Let me just say, uh, I had the honor a couple of weeks ago of swearing in Commissioner Cardona in front of his family and friends and our commissioners. Um, and I just want to say, Commissioner, how proud Governor Lamont and I are of you. And we're so proud to have you on our team, which if I can just say, it is the most diverse team that we've had in the history of our state. 52% of our executive leadership team are women and 40 percent are people of color that's historic and we should be so proud of that and i know our commissioner uns the, understands the challenges that many of our uh, students face having uh, worked in and done great work in meriden uh, and i know that our commissioner will work hard to build partnerships with parents, educators, uh, and partners across the state. Um, our commissioner is an educator at heart, a natural leader, and I know that he will do very well for our state, our schools, and our students. And to our superintendents, if there's anything that Governor Lamont and I can do to help you be more successful, please feel free to reach out at any time. Our top priority uh, is education and our young people, so know that. We so respect uh, the work that you do. It's an honor to get up every day and represent each and every one of you and all of your students. Thank you all so much for the great work that you're going to do this school year. Thank you.
Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Now I'd like to invite Chairman Taylor to come up and say a few words on behalf of the board. Chairman Taylor. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here with you and to welcome our new commissioner, Miguel Cardona. Is that coming through the mic? No. Mic is not on. Okay, I will speak loudly, <laughs> or try to anyway. Uh, it is an honor and a, a pleasure and a privilege to welcome all of you and, of course, our new commissioner, Miguel Cardona. We all know, and I trust we will all support, uh, Miguel during the beginning of his commissionership. I am certain it is going to be successful, open, uh, and available that he will be, and we on the board will continue to be, available to all of you at all times. We need your support, and most importantly, we need your advice. Don't hesitate to provide it. We all know where we want to be. We want all students able to fulfill their potential. We all believe that potential for academic accomplishment, for creative accomplishment, for leadership, for all that we value, is evenly distributed throughout the population. Resources, books, quiet, safe neighborhoods, well-educated parents, stable families, and all of the other resources, both personal and material, that contribute to children's ability to succeed, obviously are not evenly distributed. The challenge and mission, the great mission of public education is to even out the absence of equal resources with the work that you do to make it possible for all of our children to succeed as a state, as a country. We cannot afford not to have all of our children able to succeed. I believe we can reach that goal. I believe that the leadership and expertise to enable our children to reach their potential is in this room and it is in the broader grouping of our educators from paraprofessionals through the most experienced teachers and principals and superintendents. Our board, as you know, does not appropriate, and we all know that resources matter. But we can, within the limits of the law, change policies that hinder your work or create policies that will further it. Talk to us. Share your concerns. Share your ideas. And let's work together. Together we can, we must, and we will do better by our children. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Chairman Taylor. One of my first memories. I recall on a balmy, sun, uh, balmy morning in early September 1980, being walked from my two-bedroom, second-story apartment on Lewis Avenue in Meriden to John Barry School by my beautiful 24-year-old uh, mother, Sarah, for my first day of kindergarten. I recall walking in, feeling scared, not fitting in, seeing all the big kids, and that feeling, that horrible feeling of leaving my mother for the first time. That day did not end well for me. 
She had to come in and pick me up early from the nurse's office. It wasn't a pretty sight, let me tell you. But she comforted me. And she told me, go back tomorrow. You'll be okay. Despite the worries as a five-year-old, with a supportive group of teachers, leaders, and family, I ended up doing okay. I don't share this story with you to say that I'll be calling my mommy to pick me up today <laughs> if it doesn't go well. I won't. But instead, like that day, what seemed like an insurmountable challenge served as my first step into schooling. This schooling that started off really scary opened doors for my family and me in ways that nothing else can. It opened the door to a career in public education that, with God's blessing, starts another chapter here with you today. Like that five-year-old that relied on all of those around him to reach his potential, I stand here as your commissioner with that same belief. Instead of it being just me, however, the stakes are much higher. The success of half a million students in Connecticut will depend on how well we partner together. There is no assembly of people that is more wide-reaching and can more positively impact the lives of our children in the state of Connecticut than this group right here today, right now. There's no group that can do more. Superintendents make decisions that will forever impact the lives of children. I'm a product of that, and I intend to honor and seek partnerships as commissioner. While I believe there's so much going well in the state of Connecticut, there are areas that we will focus on at the agency to ensure increased levels of success for students and for educators. If we further our work in strengthening college partnerships, we'll give students an opportunity to transition into college and potentially save money. Higher levels of education increase your earning power. We need to double down on our efforts and our commitment to provide dual enrollment options with colleges so that driven, high-performing students that put in the work can also graduate with an associate's degree. Stronger partnerships with Connecticut businesses will create lucrative pathways for our students and provide them with the skills and the experiences for jobs that wait for them when they graduate. Designing, or in some cases, redesigning our high schools to create courses that interest students, provide micro-credentials, or guaranteed credit-bearing internships and pathways to employment can be done without compromising academic rigor. And I'm committed to bringing both higher education and business leaders around the table to make it happen. Thank you. If I, if I look at my role as only education, I fail to grasp, grasp the potential we have to influence policy in the state. My agency will blur the lines and collaborate with housing, economic development, early childhood, and transportation, to name a few, to redefine how we serve our shared constituents. Similarly, the capacity in this room here today reminds me that some of the problems you may be facing in your district are issues that were just overcome in another district by a colleague of yours. I look forward to promoting practices that shares our collective capacity. We know students learn best from one another. We know teachers learn best from one another. The same is true for leaders. Despite having less staff in the department than 10 or 15 years ago, I'm convinced we have greater capacity to address the challenges in education today. David Weinberger stated, the smartest person in the room is the room itself. We is always better than me. We all got into education to improve outcomes for students. For the last 20 plus years, I've devoted myself to being a public school educator. Yet, I'm a part of the system that produces results that are still predictable by zip code and shades of skin. We must do better. We must do better. And while poverty is a major factor, it's not the only one. 
More affluent black kids in Connecticut perform worse than poorer white kids. More affluent Latino students in Connecticut perform about the same as poorer white kids. This is not an urban issue. This is a Connecticut issue. I'm, I'm tired of hearing about the gaps in Connecticut and what Pedro Noguera calls the normalization of failure. Personally, it takes up a lot of my emotional bandwidth. Together, let's get rid of them. If we can't do it, who can? It's on us. The State Department of Education is a service agency. We serve as a support to the districts and to the kids of Connecticut. Despite the countless requirements of oversight we have, we are not a compliance agency. We'll strive to provide support, guidance, direction, and help you as you do the very difficult job you were hired to do. As we have a constitutional responsibility to provide a free, appropriate public education, we also will work closer with the districts that need it in a supportive manner. To do this, we will evolve our agency to ensure we are supporting you with the instructional core. Providing high quality education requires connections with our kids, a highly competent workforce, and rigorous content that prepares our students for life after school. Ensuring this will improve academic outcomes for all students and re reduce disparities and the over-identification of students as disabled. A quality educational program includes attention to early childhood, social and emotional supports, strong tier one programming, and appropriate support for students with exceptionalities or students that are fortunate to be bilingual. The instructional core is the core of what we do. Finally, we are responsible for our narrative. I refuse to be defined by the challenges we face. If that was the case, I would never have returned to school as that five-year-old who had a really bad first day. Yes, we have significant challenges ahead. But I have faith in what we're going to accomplish together. I have faith in my team from the State Department of Education some great people I've met in the last two weeks. And I have faith in the collective capacity in this room here today. I'd like to take a moment to ask my team from the State Department of Education to please stand and be recognized. In the coming weeks, I'll be establishing a way to highlight promising practices throughout our state. I hope each district can participate and share some of the great work you are doing. This will take place through social media platforms. You'll hear more from Peter, our communications director. For now, we're working on getting our Facebook and Twitter handles out there to create a wider base. We control our narrative. I'm confident that if we put our energy into working collaboratively, promoting successes, aggressively attacking the challenges we face, fighting as the lead child advocates that we are in the state, and focusing on maintaining the instructional core at the heart of our work, not only will we learn together and grow together, we will lead the nation together. We have the capacity to do that in Connecticut. Let's do it together. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to call up a champion for children and a champion for superintendents across the state, Fran Rabinowitz. Fran? Good morning, everyone. Uh, the CAPS board um, president, 
I'm Kathy Greeter, and I welcome you this morning. It's so good to see all of you and to welcome our new commissioner and our lieutenant governor as we partner together to launch a new year, a new year of opportunity and challenge. We welcome a new group of teachers and students who, as um, Miguel said, look to us to offer them a brilliant new beginning to the next stage of their lives. What a huge responsibility and privilege we have. I want to first take the opportunity to thank the 127 superintendents for responding to the CAP survey so that we could learn a little bit more about each other and so that CAPs could serve your needs in the best way possible. Here are a few data points about you as superintendents that you should know. First, on average, you've served as superintendents for 7.6 years. 6.8 of those years are in Connecticut. And in your present district, the average amount of years served is four. Averages can be very deceptive, as we know. So here are a few more telling numbers. 48% of you answering the survey has served as superintendents for five years or less. 50% of you have served fewer than four years in your present district. That means we do have lots of mobility as leaders in Connecticut, which certainly has implications for continuity and coherence of program and practice in districts. It's not surprising then that given that data, and we have a number of new superintendents this year that I am honored to introduce and welcome to our wonderful group. Would you please stand when I call your name? New superintendents appointed after the beginning of the 1819 school year are Joe DeBacco from Ansonia. Catherine Carbone from Bristol. Enza McCree from Cromwell. Michael Cummings from Fairfield. And we know that although every superintendent wanted to be here, you can't believe how many texts I received saying, I'm so sorry, but we have convocation today. So we know that there were um, some absent, but I promise that I would give them every detail of today's um, um, opening. Ema Kennelly from Heartland. <clears throat> Kate Erickson from Learn. Lori Palin from Montville. <laughs> Cynthia Ritchie from New London. <laughs> Carrie Parker from New Milford. <laughs> Jason McKinnon from Oxford. <laughs> Stephen LePage from Plainville. Dan Sullivan from Putnam. <laughs> Brian White from Region 4. <laughs> Susan Lobomsky from Torrington. <laughs> and Sean Parkhurst from Windsor Locks. <laughs> I hope I didn't leave anyone out, but if I did, you are more than welcome to our uh, fabulous group. At this time, I'd also like to honor those CAPS members who have served more than 20 years as superintendent and are still standing. <laughs> some are active, some newly retired, and some continue as interims. If I miss some people, it's perhaps because you weren't able to answer the survey, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, please stand, 
please stand so we can honor you. Michael Grainer. <laughs> Joe Reardon. <laughs> Sal Pascarella. <laughs> Van Riley. <laughs> Dave Irwin. <laughs> Jack Welch. Jim Connolly, <laughs> Steve Adamowski, and Tim McDowell. Congratulations. Uh, in these few um, precious moments that I have to address you, I thought a lot about what I wanted to say to you today. I find it so daunting to say just the right things, after, even after all these years, um, to impart my thoughts and feelings about how important you are to the future of Connecticut and the future of education in Connecticut. I just read Thinking in Bets by Annie Duke, who talks about two things that determine our life journey, the quality of our decisions and luck. I've thought a lot about that and made the decision, which I hope is a good one, to share some very, very old but enduring foundational truths about leadership from what is my favorite book, The Servant Leader. The author states, leadership is less concerned with pep talks and more concerned with creating a place in which people can do their good work can find meaning in their work, and can bring their spirits to work. My hope is that we have an enduring partnership with our new commissioner, with our state board, with our governor, lieutenant governor, legislature, and partner organizations to create just that place for all of you so that in turn, you can create a premier learning space for those you serve. Welcome to the 2019-20 school year. At this time, it is an honor for me to um, not introduce to you, because you all know him, um, but to bring up a wonderful friend and outstanding um, colleague. Uh, I lear have learned so much from Alan Adley, who was um, our 2018-19 Superintendent of the Year. Alan taught me about um, innovation, about leadership, about taking a hard stand um, when a stand is very controversial. He taught me about teaching and learning. He taught me about professional learning communities. He is an outstanding professional, and it is an honor to bring Alan um, forward to offer some words of greeting. Alan? Quite the same numbers. 
Uh, as you know, I, I, for some of you, I'm, I'm sort of captain of a, a bigger ship uh, this, this particular year down in Darien. Uh, but as we all know, there are big ships in the district, uh, in, the, in the state of Connecticut, small ships, but the best ships are friendships. And I want to say thank you for your friendships over the year. You may not have known that I've made a difference. It always makes a difference. Um, I would ask you to stay connected with your peers and friends along the way because uh, we're doing the hard work together. And Miguel, never be afraid to call your mommy son. <laughs> Listen, these people do it. We do it all the time. I don't know a mother in the nation who would not appreciate, no matter how old you are, you are her child, right? And they always like to hear from you. If you hear my brogue a wee bit stronger today, I'm just back from a couple of weeks at the British Open. <laughs> Which, by the way, an Irish man won, right? In, in Ireland, so obviously that, that was a good thing. Hey, just a couple of wee remarks for you. Nothing, uh, nothing uh, like dramatic that you haven't heard before. I think you'd be very surprised if you did, uh, for some reason. To our new superintendents, you're in the greatest perfection in the world. You, you simply are. If you don't realize it this morning, you're here, you stood to the plate uh, to do the job. Uh, thank you for doing that for all of our kids in Connecticut. Uh, you're, you're just privileged to do the best. It's the most responsibility in the world, but it's the best job in the world. Uh, so I hope you feel that uh, each and every day along the way. And I would, if I give you a couple of wee words of wisdom, for what it's worth, a couple of things that I've learned along the way, or at least felt along the way. Here's one. No one to hold and fold them and just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I held a die in, right? <coughs> one I learned along the way with one of the professors at Harvard, right? Don't create any more of a mess you can't clean up. That's a pretty good thing. And one that sort of served me well, as simple as it might be, what's the worst thing that happened if you made that decision? I think if you, if you, if you were to consider that, uh, well, I guess you could also call in, what would my mommy say? Not that you're right. <laughs> so I don't know if, um, you can take this for It reminds me a little bit, on the start of the school year, it's like Christmas. Like, you remember the Polar Bear Express? Like, have you lost the sound of the bell? Right? I hope for you, I mean, that you haven't lost the sound of the school bell ready to start, because it is one privileged feeling to have. You know that feeling. True teachers know that feeling. Can you hear the school bells ring? The sound of school about to begin, right? This is uh, like 35 years ago I fell in love. I'm happily still in love with the same person, that's great. <laughs> This, this is Pammy, uh, Pamela, my wife, uh, who works in Hartford here. And uh, the wee different version of us, and you can see the twin towers and actually the background. Right? About 32 years ago, uh, and I shared some of this wee story with you at the start of the year, but since I'm winding down, I'll, I'll give you a little bit towards the end. We, uh, 35 years ago, we came to America, Waterbury Hospital. Where's Waterbury School System? Are they here? Yes. Are they here? Yes. Okay, well, anyway, thank you to Waterbury, the town of Waterbury, the city of Waterbury. Uh, they brought my wife and I uh, to America, right? And when we left Ireland, and this is a true story, when we left Ireland, we had two suitcases and $2,000 to our name. We sold everything, all our possessions. Why did we come? We came to, ex to experience the American dream. And let me tell you something, the American dream is alive and well. We had two suitcases and one suitcase, we had hope. And in the other suitcase, we had education. Kids come to our school today, tomorrow, next week. They are coming with their backpacks with, with hope and with the hope of education for a future. I don't care if you're in Darien. I don't care if you're in the Deep River, uh, Danbury, Derby, or anywhere else, right? I don't know any kid who's going, hey, what, I'm going to come back to school today. And the first day I'm going to try and screw up. <laughs> <laughs> they all come with the hopes and aspirations they're going to do well. And I don't know whether you think Darien, in this case, is a different community than, than our own city here in Hartford. And it's wonderful to be here in Hartford, right? But I don't know any parent who doesn't want their kids to do better than they did. That's, I think we all feel that way, right? And it's our charge to actually try and make that happen. Like when you get older a little bit, I don't know, even when you're involved in education, when grandchildren come into your life, which I don't have any just yet, <laughs> but other children come into your life, like my nephew's young, uh, young daughter, Ellie, that two-year-old is just a beautiful year. When you're in the uncle and stuff, it's pretty good because they can go away again. But, <laughs> <laughs> but this is, uh, we played that, we down to Westerly sometimes, and uh, she, when she visited, she was down on the Westerly beach. And I couldn't help but just notice uh, when she was having fun on the beach, she went down to the water, and down along the water, there was a little girl of color. 
and Ellie and her played together. And when they were in the water, I couldn't help but see a boat in the distance. And the images for me was just so powerful. Equity is the tide that raises all boats. I don't care if you're in Derry, in Greenwich, Hartford, wherever you are. I would ask you to take a stance on equity, make decisions, not just for your own school district, which takes an awful lot of skill, but do the right thing for all kids in Connecticut. I think uh, that may start, and uh, uh, Fran is, as I know, is working on it, but an equitable funding package uh, for all students, give all students the opportunity. And honestly, I would push you for not just opportunity of opportunities, equity, equity of outcomes. This thing will work. I have to stand around there, I guess. All right, I have a favorite wee book, if you don't know. It's a given trade, I won't go. And, Every superintendent has a wee children's book, don't you? I mean, your favourite book. And I read this to kids in kindergarten and all sorts of grade levels uh, up, and down, up and down the system. And it talks about, obviously, the unconditional love and devotion. And for that, I can read the given tree right now to you because that's your un, un, unconditional love and devotion you have for public education in the state of Connecticut. But I share it with you because sometimes this, this through line, you know, we hire these Connecticut network people and all these people tell us the through line. Sometimes it's hard to see, right? Isn't it? Like, we're doing what we're doing and so does this matter, right? So I'll give you two stories. One will, the second one will be about the book. If you don't think it matters, here's a wee, it can be a simple story, right? It's not really earth shattering. But last year I was at the end of the year, one of the board meetings. Bob, no offense, but the board were going, they were crazy. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> it, was, it was late, right? It was one of those late meetings, you know what they feel like? I said, what? heck are these people talking about, right? This is crazy, right? So, on top of the, at the end of the year, you're exhausted, it's like, what? <coughs> even the people who were showing up, like, I think, what, what, this doesn't make sense. So I go into the office, the, the rain's pouring, it's dark, I'm so just like, I've had it, right? This is just frustrating. And as you like, I don't know about you, but occasionally you get to feel sorry for yourself, just occasionally, right? <laughs> but this uh, feeling sorry for myself lasted overnight. I was like, I got up the next morning, I went, normally I go to the wee place in Grand Bay and get a wee bit of breakfast and say hello to everybody, read the paper, and you know, I'm pretty outgoing and talk to them in the morning, what's, what's happening around this, the, the district this morning. But I went, into the, I went in and I, um, to the actual wee cafe and I was like, blinders, I'm going, going right to the, the desk, I'll get my cup of coffee, perhaps a wee muffin and I'm out of here, I'm not even going to interact with all the locals who are making all the decisions, real decisions that are going on and who else is in there. So I just went in my wee, wee blinders that morning and just went up and had exchanged my, uh, my money for my cup of coffee. And I heard, I didn't want to turn around and say, oh, for goodness sake, who's this? Someone's called Dr. Radley. And I, okay. So I turned around and there was a student. And there were two students over, she was with her friend. And she came over and said, Dr. Radley, we would like to buy you breakfast for, for making a difference. Now that's a simple story, but there are things that, there's many, many stories that you have, right? Of more powerful ones than those, but never forget that you actually touch the, the hearts and minds of kids along the way. This particular, I, I shared this uh, with you in terms of read, reading it to all ki kids up and down the system. I even read it to my own kids, right? Because I went through the system. I was a high school principal at the time that I went through the system. My son, Christopher, works here, by the way, right? in Hartford. He's the executive chef of the Firebox restaurant, so I never get a free meal, but you may. Okay? <laughs> The reason why I talk about him is he's been into the food industry, as I said, but one of the things Mommy was afraid of was, give me the day where he has a tattoo. Oh my God, what, what's going to happen when he has a tattoo? Or I get a big knife and a snake. So he called me one day and said, Dad, I got a tattoo. I said, son, you better tell your, tell your mom, right? So he got the tattoo, and he, he, showed, he told me what it was, and this is what it was. <laughs> oh. So there's not much more you can say, right? <laughs> but just when you think they don't listen, right, or you're not making a difference, uh, the kids listen to you, right? And uh, making a difference, you make a difference every single day along the way. Yeah. I'm gonna have to stand back here. All right, let's see if I can get this thing in So 
Fran talked about that, like two of my best friends, unfortunately, uh, they passed, passed away the divorce. But their ideas have lasted and continue to last, and that was around collaboration. Uh, when Rick passed away, he, he passed away from cancer, and uh, he went to the Mayo Clinic. And when he went to the Mayo Clinic, he saw a mission statement up on the, up on the wall, and the mission statement said this. Rick, and Rick said, uh, shared a story that he just changed one word. And I say to you today, with unsurpassed collaboration, we can make a difference for all kids in the state of Connecticut. And I'm particularly partial to this idea of teamwork, uh, working together collaboratively, uh, working, working with Miguel. Let's tell a story. Let's stand up for education. If you haven't had a wee opportunity to participate in policy or otherwise, I, I encourage you to be actively involved in the organization. If you're not going to fill the void someone else's, let's support our public education teachers. So here's a wee story. You probably remember this. Have a place for me? So, 30 years ago, this movie was like, 30 years ago, right? Five years ago, Robin Williams sadly passed away. This, this, this August, right? August 11th, August 12th. If you remember the story of a teacher, right? An innovative teacher who was free to do his work through the arts, through athletics, and through writing. If you remember, he talked about Walt Whitman. Oh, Captain, my Captain, can you hear the bells ring? For all of our kids in Connecticut from the start of the year, let's make sure we don't miss any of them. If you remember in the movie, kids stood up. Not all kids stood up. Not all kids stood up in the movie. Let's make sure that we reach all of our kids in the state of Connecticut. Let's make sure we finish the year strong, getting them all through. There's no point having a bit of enthusiasm at the start of the year if we can't finish strong with everybody. So, Carpe DM, superintendents, let's make the lives of our kids in the state of Connecticut extraordinary this particular year. Can you hear the school bell ring? Have a wonderful, wonderful school year. Congratulations to you and have a great time. So thank you, thank you, Alan. What a, what a wonderful um, beginning for our year. And um, to go back to our new commissioner's um, theme, it's we, not me. I'd like to introduce um, someone that doesn't need an introduction, um, another partner that um, together I think we can um, truly make a difference. Um, Bob Rader has served as the executive director of CAVE for many years. Um, Barb, Bob and I are great partners. We don't always agree on everything, and that's okay. Um, we 
talk together and work it through. But um, Bob has been an excellent partner, and it's an honor to um, introduce him today. The only thing good about following Alan Adley is that you might not hear that I have an accent. <laughs> Alan, that, that was wonderful. I am in awe. And luckily my job is not to be so philosophical, but to talk more about what we are going to do during the year and what we hope your boards will do with us. Um, Miguel, first of all, congratulations. We worked together on the uh, birth to three leaders group and we have worked together on other things and we plan to keep working together uh, for many years and of course working with CAPS is something so important to CABE because frankly as one of the superintendents said to me years ago the superintendent is not only the educational leader of the district he or she is also the educational leader of the board and that's what we hope you will help your boards with, providing education to them, telling them what they need to do, what they need to come to, and what we do, frankly. Um, you know, uh, Robert Putnam wrote a book about bowling alone. He's, he's written a follow-up book. And people are having more and more trouble getting together. And it's really weighing on associations. It's weighing someone on CABE. We really need our people to come out. We do a number of different things. We do advocacy, which means in the legislature as well as in the courts. And one of the most important things about that advocacy is getting school board members to the legislature to testify and help us. I think you all know Patrice McCarthy, who is our top advocate. <laughs> much, much time at the legislature and needs us. So if you have questions on uh, the legislature, right now we're working with Congress. There's an E-rate bill coming up. Also here is Sheila McKay. Sheila, I don't know where you're sitting. She was here. She's still here. Sheila McKay is also a lobbyist, and she really lives at the legislature, especially the last few days of the session. So we need your people to come out. We're also doing more professional development. We are about to announce that we are going to do webinars every two weeks um, from the CABE office. And this is one way of hitting those places that seem kind of far away. Uh, when we held a discussion in Hartford, it seems like some of the districts are, are far away. So we're going to do webinars. And some of the topics are social emotional learning, how the brain works, and how to use social media in your district. But every two weeks we're going to do this. Our members will, will get announcements of this. They'll be archived on the CAVE uh, website, and they can listen to these anytime they want. We're also going to do more hot topics. We're going to bring board chairs together more. We're going to bring uh, the biggest five districts together more. We're also going to bring other districts so that we can help them in their important roles. We continue to do policy. Most of you know Vin Mistaro. He's been doing policy for many years. You know, when I came over, uh, Vin was in charge of the policy service, and I had been charged in New York of the policy service, and I am still in awe of how much he puts out. Um, our journal. I think you probably, if you're a member, have gotten it 11 times a year in hard copy. Well, the times have caught up with us. And we're going to do, I think, six, six hard copies this year. Five um, will be just sent out electronically. Many of your members are getting it that way anyway. Feel free to share it throughout the, the district. Um, some of the other things we're going to be concentrating on, as we have in the last few years, diversity and equity. We are about to announce some new changes in what we're doing there. We're talking about boards and how they have to represent the community. It's not an easy position for a group like CAVE, which is a member association, to say to our members, hey, if there's a vacancy, if there's an election, 
please consider people of color, because our, stu our student body is more and more made up of kids of color. And there's more sensitivity to their needs when there are people of color on the boards. It's not always the case, but certainly we have to think about this as we change over to more and more of a Latinx and black um, student population. I still go out to districts, um, especially with new superintendents, to talk about our programs, services, and our activities. If you're interested in having me come, or one of the members of our board, and certainly one of the members of our staff that do retreats, do goal setting, FOI uh, discussions, please don't hesitate to contact us. So we look forward to a really busy year, and we're looking forward to working with all of you, and we're certainly looking forward to, to working with Miguel and the State Board of Education. Thank you. So as superintendents, we all know that it is um, essential to have successful principles it makes our job so much easier I never had to worry about teachers if I had a good leader in the building and um, it it's wonderful to partner with the Connecticut Association of Schools Glenn uh, Lungineri has been an excellent partner this year and um, I hope that we will uh, do even more partnering in the um, next school year. Gwen? Thank you, Commissioner Cardona. Congratulations, uh, Dr. Alley. Thank you again for those uh, great words. It's, it's always inspiring, and, and I always loved convocation as a principal, too, to, to come in and, and have that kickoff. And, uh, you know, up until today, I think uh, Jim Valvano's ESPY speech was my favorite. Uh, but hearing Dr. Cardona's and, and Dr. Adley's, and I, I want to run through the doors and get to school, and I realize I, I don't have one to go to. And <laughs> so this is it for me, and, and you're the audience, so you got to put up with, with that and, and listen to what I have to say, I suppose. Uh, but it's been a great first year at CAS for me in learning all that the organization does, and as I've had an opportunity uh, to meet with the other executive directors from around the country, I've really become extremely appreciative in Connecticut of the collaboration that we have that so many have alluded to this morning. When you hear about the struggles that are going on uh, in other states and how organizations uh, fight with each other, it truly is uh, remarkable to, to be in a state and a privilege to be in a state where the Department of Education, K, CAPS, CAS, CEA, all come together to look at that bottom line of what's in the best interest of our kids. And I think that is one of the things that continues to make Connecticut the leader in education in so many ways. At CAS, we put our focus on trying to provide the best that we can to ensure that our school districts have successful principals. In addition to that, uh, you also know that we also uh, manage interscholastic athletics in Connecticut. CIAC is a subdivision of CAS, and we work closely uh, there in terms of the, uh, the running of state tournaments and then also the governing of your uh, regular season, some rules and regulations with that. Uh, we know, if you've probably seen in the papers recently, we're, uh, we're working pretty hard uh, right now on one of our policies in terms of uh, inclusion with our transgender policy right now, but it's a position we feel very strongly in because it's not about winning and losing. We look at athletics as an extension of our school day. We look at it as another opportunity where we can get kids connected with our schools and we know how important that connection is. It's about building those relationships, about having positive adult role models, about having those peer relationships that we can trust and go to unconditionally and having those people around us that support us in success also in, in times of adversity and we'll continue to fight for what we believe is right for all of our students including our LGBTQ community with us. We'd like to uh, just remind you that CAS offers a tremendous variety of professional development and our Center for Leadership and Innovation, uh, all of the PD that we run through that is free to our member schools. It's a small fee to our non-member schools. 
Uh, in addition, we have done a, a lot of work with recognizing students through recognition uh, programs as well, and we encourage you to participate in those. We're seeking to provide further the student voice that we have within the organization. So in addition to what we do with National Honor Society and Student Council, we have also now developed a Student Athlete Advisory Board and a, a Leadership Board for Unified Sports as well. Uh, we do uh, work with Unified through our offices, and so we'll be developing more opportunities and looking at ways to get kids involved uh, within those programs and uh, great opportunities for your, for your school districts to work with as well. Uh, as always, you know, Fran, really appreciate our partnerships and the ability to work uh, with superintendents. As I said, you are the inspiration uh, for our districts. And it's fun, I, I see, you know, Jim Augustine, who is the principal uh, who inspired me to go into administration, and Judy Palmer, who gave me my first opportunity as an administrator in hiring me and knew that I wouldn't be where I was and education without the influence of superintendents and the great people uh, that we have here. So thank you for all you do. We look forward to supporting you through the year. It's always great to hear from partners. And as the students set up, I'd just like to take a quick moment to acknowledge uh, I, the partners that spoke today, partners that are in the audience, um, and some partners that I've had throughout my journey. Um, I want to acknowledge really quickly uh, Bob Villanova, who uh, I was a student of for many years, uh, Richard Lemons, who was my advisor for a couple years while I was doing my doctorate, and my team, my team from Meriden. Tom Giard, Bob Angeli, and Mark Benigni. Thank you. Thank you for all your support. So, I had a whopping two weeks to plan and prepare for today, in addition to a couple other things going on at the State Department of Education. I knew that I wanted the participation of students in some capacity. In full disclosure, because I am from Meriden, I wanted to reach out to other districts to get students from different parts of the state to perform. This was especially challenging. As many teachers are away, and putting together a chorus takes planning. I almost decided not to have a student performance. But this past weekend, I attended the beautiful Celebration of Life Memorial to Ray Southland, a Meriden principal and friend. He unexpectedly passed this summer. The students you'll hear from performed this weekend for Ray and his beautiful family, and with only two days' notice, accepted the invitation to sing for you today. Thank you, Dory and Alan, for your efforts. The title and theme of this song is as fitting for a wonderful principal as it is for committed leaders of districts. Here to perform for good from the Broadway musical Wicked are the mixed chorus of Washington Middle School in Maloney High School.
Because of you, I've been changed for good. Powerful. Super emotional for me, not only because of Ray, but my kids were in that choir. Colleagues, we will lead the nation in educating our youth. How that happens depends on how we work together. Like many first-time superintendents in the room and any new commissioner, you'll have the best experience for the job on the last day in the job. <laughs> but that motivates me to give you the best of me. That, motiva that motivates me to give you the best of my department so that you can lead and help your children, your students, achieve new heights. As a product of our public school system and a parent of two who are in our public school system, our kids deserve nothing less. In a few days, over half a million students will come into your schools. For most of those students, what we provide is the best chance at success in life that they will ever have. Kind of like me as a little five-year-old that went to John Barry School in Meriden. Let's learn together, let's grow together, and let's give them the best shot. Enjoy this brief slideshow as a reminder of our shared why. Thank you for being here, and have a great year. Thank you.
Thank you for being here. Have an awesome year.